uh, uh, Alessandra Curioni will uh, give us a glimpse of what is to come potentially with uh, immunotherapy in the next years. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen and dear colleagues, thank you very much, the organizers, for giving me the opportunity to share with you some thoughts on how to overcome the resistance to immunotherapy. And I can believe you might be tired at this time, but I also believe that most of you are treating patients with immunotherapy, which means that sooner or later you might encounter this problem. What can I do next? How can I overcome this resistance? Well, in order to answer to this, I am firmly convinced that only the understanding between the interaction between the cancer cells and the immune system will help us to improve the treatments. And let me guide you through these kind of interactions. First, everything starts with the release of tumor antigens from the cancer cells that are going to be uptaken by antigen-presenting cells. These mature antigen-presenting cells will go to the lymph node interact with T lymphocyte CD4, CD8. These lymphocytes are ready now to go to the blood, find the cancer cells, and kill them. Well, this system might perfectly work, but there are some ways and some mechanisms by which this cancer can escape the recognition of the immune system. This mechanism might be at the level of the cancer cells as well as in the immune system. Cancer cell-specific would be tumor intrinsic, and this might be, for example, the reduced expression of antigens, as well as the reduced expression of MHC molecules. And you have heard this morning um, work presented by Professor Govindan about how the MHC class 1 can be lost by mutation at the level of the beta-2 microglobulin, as well as the expression of inhibitory molecules, what we have heard today. But there are also tumor extrinsic ways by the presence of inhibitory cells and suppressive cytokines. What we have heard before from Professor Peters are the great successes with the treatments targeting PD-1 or PDL1 pathway. There are many others, immune checkpoint inhibitors, and many other molecules that will inhibit the T cell response that are going to be targeted for treatments in the next future. What we know to date are the excellent results of targeting the pathway of PD-1, PD-L1. But, however, there are some mechanisms by which tumor can escape. And I would like to present you the data of the group of Anthony Ribas. Anthony Ribas and his group were showing and publishing the case of some patients with melanoma who had an initial response, you can see this lesion, and then response under immunotherapy with an anti-PD-1 antibody, but eventually this mass progressed under treatment. So what did they do? They sequenced these biopsies in order to understand what mechanism was overcoming the response to immunotherapy. And you can see it clearly in this graph. In this graph, you see the genetic changes each one of these slides is the different chromosome. And what you can see here pointed in green dots are the changes, the mutational changes at the baseline, and the red dots are the one present at the resistance. You can see clearly on the external part of the circle the most frequent genetic changes. You see here the frequency of the allelic variants. And there is only one red dot that frequently appears here, meaning this was a mutation occurring at the resistant time point. Where was this mutation? This was in the JEC1 gene. He could also detect a mutation in the JEC2 gene in another patient with melanoma. What are these genes? What are these molecules? Well, these molecules are fundamental in the interferon type 1 and type 2 pathway. JEC1 in both, JEC2 in the type 2 interferon gamma pathway. Why are these so important? At the tumor level, these are not mutation on the immune cell system. These are present in the tumor cells. Why is that so important? Well, most of you might know that interferon are fundamental for the activation, 
duration of the immune responses at the level of the NK cells, for example, or T cells. But there is a direct activity from the interferons to the tumor cells. And this activity involves block of growth, pro-apoptotic pathway activation, and promoting of differentiation of tumor cells. What does this mean? That these JEK1 and JEK2 mutation have blocked the tumor intrinsic activity of interferon in these patients. Well, how can we overcome a possible tumor intrinsic resistance? I certainly believe that one possibility would be radiotherapy. And why that? Because what we know is that radiotherapy would increase protein synthesis, would increase the presence of antigen release, and would for sure activate transcriptional mechanism that might lead to the overexpression of several immunomodulators. So certainly, a possible combinatorial treatment with radiotherapy would make sense. And I would like, therefore, to share with you the case of a patient of us. This is a patient with non-small cell lung cancer, stage 4, who was in second-line treatment, treated with nivolumab. This is the stage of disease in June 15, and you can see in red dotted the metastasis. We treated the patient with anti-PD-1 antibody, and you can see a complete response of the different metastases, but the appearance of three new ones. What would we do next? Well, at this time point, the patient was in an AAP program, so he was not in a clinical trial. Otherwise, by definition, he would have been progressive and we would have had to stop the treatment. At this time point, I contacted colleagues of the radio oncology department and said, would it be possible to irradiate some of these lesions stereotactically? And this was done. Two of these metastases were irradiated. And we continued to treat the patient with anti-PD-1 antibody and achieved a complete response. What does it mean? That the radiotherapy changed the tumor in a way that the immune system was able also to kill the third metastasis. What do we have on the immune system level? And this is, I think, it's a pretty clear work that has been performed. We have mentioned before many other immunomodulatory molecules, inhibitory molecules, and one of them is the TIM3. It has been shown in a preclinical model of mice that have with a non-small cell lung cancer who are responding initially to PD-1, developing a resistance. And this resistance was due to the present new of TIM3 upregulation on the T cells. These mice were then afterwards treated with a combination of PD-1 and TIM3 antibody and responded. Does this occur in patients? And the authors could see and could detect that this can occur in patients. And you can see the control, and you can see here in white before the treatment, and you can see the patients who are developing a resistance to anti-PD-1 treatment and an increased number of CD4 and CD8 TIM3 positive, which means that the patients developed another pathway, another inhibitory pathway activated to overcome the anti-PD-1 treatment. There are many, many molecules that will play a role, and one possibility will be, therefore, to combine either with inhibitors of inhibitory molecules or with agonists of stimulatory molecules. I would like to say that the University Hospital in Zurich and our clinics are taking part to several clinical trials, and this slide also as a summary, combination of different immune checkpoint inhibitors as well as agonist, combination immunotherapy with radiotherapy, combination with chemotherapy in different trials, and let me mention to you some of our preclinical results of my uh, research project, combining immunotherapy with chemotherapy with the epigenetic modulation. We could achieve, uh, we could analyze this uh, in a preclinical mesothelioma model, and we tested different combinations, and you can see here the survival of the mice untreated, treated with immune checkpoint inhibitors, therefore not responding 
the chemotherapy alone, and here are the, resu the results of the combination. So we wanted to use a combination of immunotherapy and epigenetic modulation. These mice had no tumors at all visible anymore. We had at a certain point as well to kill them because we couldn't stay for such a long time to take care of them, but they had a complete disappearance. And I would like to state again that it will be just the understanding of how this combination might lead to this result that will help all of us to improve the treatment of our patients. I would like to thank all the colleagues and especially of the different clinics because, as I said, it's only collaboration together that will lead us to this improvement. And thank to, of course, to the laboratory I'm working with in the experimental immunology of the University of Zurich. Thank you very much for your attention.